Hey everybody, um, this is Axel here, and uh, you know, after the video that I did uh, that was sent to me, I got a little bit more curious as to uh, Don't Walk Run Productions uh, and what their content is. Um, it seems like while it was kind of missing a lot of key details, that video that I looked at, which is a couple years old, um, which is why I titled the video like a like a throwback, because although it was, I had never seen the video. Um, and it was given to me like the day that I recorded it. Uh, it. It was by no means like entirely relevant, right? So I wanted to look at something a bit more prescient from the same person because they at least feigned some level of policy critique. Otherwise, why would you criticize like data points and stuff like this, right? So uh, I wanted to just look at the most recent video uh, from the channel um, and just kind of, you know what, just go into it cold and... I don't know, see if we have a fucking good time or not. Um, if you enjoy yourself, be sure to subscribe, uh, dislike, and leave hate comments, please, because I love that shit, so. Let's fucking see what's going on here. Apparently it is Joe Biden versus the stairs, and I'm already familiar with the situation, but let's see if maybe he branches out to a larger topic instead of focusing only on culture war bullshit that the conservatives have to rely on these days since they don't actually have any policies that anyone really supports so this is president joe biden during the 2020 campaign biden ran on the premise that he was going to raise taxes but only for the wealthiest of americans here's how my plan works it's not going to raise a penny in tax for anyone making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year not a penny <coughs> what biden was proposing i love the added sound effects and stuff by the way like um this this kind of goes into like uh, what i've talked to you before whenever i'm like looking at these conservative videos is that it's about priming you you know what i mean it's about setting up the opposition to either look foolish or unknowledgeable so that you can come in as the savior of logic with facts and uh you know basically bring levity to the situation the whole purpose of characterizing yourself as the authority here uh because i you know i imagine as we go through this he's not going to make himself look stupid right like it'd be one thing if you were doing that too but as like some sort of like you know visual irony or, or something like this um but uh no, like it, it's, you know, oh, look at me, the straight laced, you know, fact driven conservative going against the lunatic libtard who doesn't understand policy and um, has their head way too far up uh, where the sun don't shine uh, in order for, you know, like any meaningful discussion to be had. Right. Like the whole purpose of this is to condescend, uh, I would assume. But you know what? Let's go into it. Maybe uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. Was raising the top federal individual. <laughs> what Biden was proposing was raising the top federal individual tax rate from 37% to 39.6% and lowering the threshold of who would pay it. It's time to reward hard work in America, not wealth. Reward work, not wealth. We have to penalize wealth. But it's the opposite now. We reward wealth and not work. When a Democrat or socialist sees wealth, they automatically think that it comes from a place of... Uh, so, just a small... Again, this is kind of speaking into that primer aspect here of how you're priming your audience. Um, when a Democrat or socialist... I mean, there are right-wing libertarians who will have the same criticism of wealth, but their ire will be focused on how like the state allows for that kind of excessive amount of wealth to be captured by specific market forces or you know multinational corporations because those corporations are given protection by the state so the state should be weakened uh, in order to make it to where that hoarding of wealth wouldn't be possible uh, of course i don't agree with that but that's the core of a lot of their argument so this is not just like a left critique that like wealth is rewarded in an unjust way why it is unjust can be different um, and why uh, and, and how it's hoarded, like the, the mechanism by which it is hoarded could also be different. So it's not necessarily uh, a socialist or Democrat thing. Uh, and also, too, conflating socialists with the Democrats is not exactly uh, accurate, right? I mean, Bernie Sanders, who's not even really like a super hardcore socialist by any stretch of the imagination, uh, didn't win the primary twice, right? So... You know, you can have a lot of arguments about like, oh, it was rigged the first time. Eh, 
maybe maybe there was some like you know pushing you know pushing of the buttons a little bit in ways that are kind of like eh, but like honestly that's still related to like you're just affecting like people's mindset going into a primary you know vote it you're not literally changing votes so it's not rigging in that sense. Uh, and in 2020, we knew that they would try and pull out all the stops again, too. So, again, calling it rigging is inaccurate. Bernie lost. There's a lot of reasons why he lost. This video is not about how he lost. If people get mad enough about that, we can talk about that. But, um, yeah, the idea that the socialists are the Democrats, or at least to enough of the Democrats uh, to a degree to where they can be conflated in this manner... Um, goes to show that either he is not very knowledgeable um, or he is instead trying to paint a picture so that wherever this conclusion goes, um, it'll make sense or it'll, it'll qualify at least based off of the premises being set here. Privilege and seize wealth. They automatically think... And not work. When a Democrat or socialist sees wealth, they automatically think that it comes from a place of privilege and that you didn't work hard for it. Like, if Not true. This is a straw man. Um, so, um, first of all, this is, a, this is a straw man because it is definitely just a fact, by the way, that most wealth in America is inherited. So it's not to say that like the people who inherit the wealth, by definition, are not hardworking people. But it is to say that if you are born wealthy, you will die wealthy. And that is just a, that's just a fact of American life. Social mobility, or sorry, economic mobility, is at, uh, I think it's at an all-time low uh, in American society, at least since we started tracking these numbers. Um, so, I mean, yeah, in fact, you know, let's just fact check myself right now, just so I can be holding myself accountable here. I lost my space. Sees wealth. They automatically think that it comes from a place of privilege and that you didn't work hard for it. Okay, so, No. Let's go ahead and check. Economic Mobility USA. Let's check it out. Do we look at the Wikipedia article? I don't know. Uh, let's see. This report examines the transmission. Key findings. Approximately half of parental income advantages are passed on to children. Okay. The IG, when averaged across all levels of parental income, is estimated at 0.52 for men and 0.47 for women. These estimates are at the high end of previous estimates and imply that the United States is very immobile. Children born far apart in the income uh, distribution have very different economic outcomes. The expected family income of children raised at the 90th income percentile is about three times that of children raised at the 10th percentile. Parental income matters more for men's earnings than for women's. Oh, that's interesting. Not, not evidence of patriarchal society, though. The persistence of advantage is especially large among those raised in the middle to upper reaches of the income is distribution. The IG among adults whose parents were between the 15th and 90th income percentiles is 0.68 for men, 0.63 for women. This means that approximately two-thirds of parental income differences within this region of the income distribution persist into the next generation. When you're born poor, you die poor. When you're born rich, you die rich. Now, obviously, this is not like a universality, right? Like, there are obviously exceptions here on both ends. Um, but the, 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 the trend is, is that, is, is extremely immobile. So this criticism of wealth stems from that understanding, right? That one, you know, the socialist critique would be, you know, your productive capacity is, is essentially being exploited because the wealth that you produce within that productive capacity, um, is not being retained by your, by you. You know, it's, it's oftentimes the majority of that wealth created by your productive capacity. So your work, your labor is being siphoned off by your boss for, you know, just to simplify it a bit. So that's the socialist critique. Uh, a liberal critique wouldn't necessarily be against that kind of a setup because they do believe in market economics and capitalism. Um, so their critique would be much more along the lines of, hey, you know, we do need to have some re redistributive policies because we don't want to live in, you know, the Gilded Age again, where you have, you know, super wealthy, extremely high quality of life individuals that are very few in number at the top of the spectrum, toiling or, or like ruling over, you know, the huddled masses masses that you know are in despair and constant economic strife and agony 
So um, they often will like rely on like technocratic approaches using like you know government bureaucracy, uh, taxation, stuff like this to at least uh, like deliberately redistribute some of this wealth after the wealth is already created and hoarded at the top, for example. So Biden definitely falls much more in that realm of things as opposed to the socialist critique, which is much more kind of like at the point. Uh, that the at the point of origin where the wealth is siphoned away, they would want that uh, to be nixed or at least made more equal in its distribution of wealth. So again, it's not about oh you know you're wealthy, um, we we hate that because you're just a lazy bastard. It's much more about the fact that hey, a lot of wealth is inherited and also a lot of that wealth is not just made by itself. Like, if you're a CEO, no one's saying you don't work 16, 18 hours a day. No one's saying you have sleepless nights. No one's saying you don't stress. No one is saying that. And no one's saying that it's an easy fucking job. I couldn't be a CEO. You know what I mean? Like, no one is saying that. But what we are saying is that you as a CEO, your work is not worth, like, 3,000 times your lowest paid employee. At least not to the degree to where that lowest paid employee has to get government programs to subsidize like food and housing because they literally cannot exist in society, right? Because it's too expensive or what, or, or, or what have you. So that's the core criticism, right? That the distribution is reflective of a deeper problem. Not that the, the distribution in and of itself means that like you're lazy and me, the poor hard worker, is not as lazy as you or, or a harder worker than you, you know. So I, I think that this misattribution of the, of, the, of the logic here is definitely another example of priming your audience to accept whatever conclusion we're getting into. Like you just click a money button and break in the bucks automatically. I mean, not everyone is rich because they were lucky enough to receive a 10% cut of their son's business dealings. Okay, so <laughs> it's funny how like conservatives fall onto this point when it's like to their benefit. They always do this. Like he's not going to bring I guarantee you, he's not going to bring up the fact that like the Trump family literally enriched themselves off of the White House and their White House positions, like to the tune of millions of taxpayer dollars. That I guarantee you that's not going to be brought up here. Because a socialist would criticize, you know, the nepotism involved with Biden getting his son, you know, into, you know, wealthy and privileged positions within society so that, you know, his son can make independent money that is, like, not a small amount of money. Um, I, I think that that would be a fair criticism of Biden uh, and political families in general in the world, not just the United States. Um. I think liberals within the Democrats would probably be a little bit more reticent to to levy that criticism. Oftentimes, you know, in their defense, oftentimes because these criticisms will lead into like batshit conspiracy theories that are just nonsense. So, um, yeah, because they miss the point always, conservatives. Uh, but but here's the thing, though, like the fact that Biden was able to pull that off for his kid is not cool, man. Right. It's not very. It's not very zen, you know, okay, in the grand grand scheme of things, not very cool. I think uh, I think I can agree with that, but um, I, I'd be curious to see how, how he extends this logic further other than just shitting on Biden. Who's the big guy, Joe? Anyway, before we continue, I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page, so let me quickly explain how federal income tax brackets work. Here are the 2021 federal income tax brackets for single filers. Let's say you make $90,000 this year. Looking at this chart, you would fall into this category. Right. That means you would be taxed 24% of your $90,000 income, right? No. <laughs> nope. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. I'll try to make this as simple as possible. Everything that you make between $0 and $9,950 is taxed at 10%. Correct. Then everything between $9,951 and $40,525 will be taxed at 12% Correct. and so on. Yep, yep, now, yep. Biden hasn't sent a detailed tax plan to Congress yet, but we have a pretty good idea about some of the basics. On his campaign page, Biden proposed raising the top individual income rate back to 39.6%. So again, what all that means is that Biden wants the top tax rate raised from 37% to 39.6%, right. and the income threshold would be lowered to $400,000. Right. To reiterate, Joe Biden has promised over and over again 
that if you make under $400,000 a year, you will not pay higher taxes. On Biden's campaign website, it states, he won't ask a single person making under $400,000 per year to pay a penny more in taxes. And Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000, period. Um, yeah, and so, like, this has actually been a criticism of a lot uh, uh, from the left of Biden, is that this is a very weak plan. Uh, and also, too, these kind of establishment-type Democrats, like the mainstream, like, neoliberal-type Democrats that are, like, popular from, like, the triangulation days of the Democratic Party into today, of course, um, that make up the majority of the Democratic Party apparatus, they are just bad at branding. So... They will say stuff like, hey, you know, we're not going to tax you if you make less than $400,000, which is true uh, if this kind of plan were to pass. But, like, let's say they were to increase some kind of, like, a Social Security benefit that requires, like, an increase in the Social Security tax, right? Republicans are going to pounce on that, right? And so, uh, and then at that point where the branding problem happens is that Democrats have, like, put all their eggs in the basket of not raising taxes, being the focal point as opposed to like the benefit of a tax of, of such a, of, of, of such a tax increase, you know, instead of, instead of like saying Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone making less than 400 K literally delete that sentence and just focus on like what this bill is doing. And when the Republicans come in and say, Oh, well, but you're raising taxes as, cause that would be the only criticism. Then you would say, well, this tax bill is just raising taxes on people who make over that. Rather, so rather than like putting all your eggs in the basket of like taxation raising is bad or, or uh, lower taxes uh, for the middle class is good, which things I generally agree with, of course, I'm, I'm just saying like in terms of branding, you would instead be putting it in, hey, this tax increase has this benefit on policy, right? If you tie these tax increases to like, you know, expanded public health care or, you know, like public infrastructure projects or something, you know, or something like a specific policy, then you can focus on the policy rather than like the taxation. And often technocratic Democrat types love getting lost in the details of policy without like focusing on like how effective rhetoric is equally, if not more important. Um, and, you know, and honestly, I think it's kind of a... a kind of an established understanding that it's more important because i mean like i'm sure everyone maybe not everyone but there, there's a lot of interesting polling that was done like toward the end of the obama years where they would ask people like what's your opinion on the affordable care act and they would be like oh very positive i really like what this plan has done for my state i i have access to more affordable health insurance than i ever did before and in the same poll they would ask them what's your opinion on Obamacare? And then they would overwhelmingly negative. It would be, you know, hey, I really don't like Obama. He's increased my taxes, so on and so on, stuff like this. And without realizing that like Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act are the same thing. And that disconnect exists because Republicans, as fucking craven and death culty as they are, like specific, not necessarily Republican voters, but like Republican the party apparatus, as death culty as they are, they're very effective at messaging. And so they can make it to where you literally vote against your own interest in like the most explicit way. Uh, like a policy that you support, you can vote against it because they just make it a branding exercise of talking badly about the name or give that policy its own name and constantly refer to it in such a way. But let's see what he, let's see what the point is here. Here's how my plan works. I'm not going to raise taxes on a single solitary American making less than $400,000. Because obviously he's priming to talk about how taxes are increased on people less than 400 k so let, Let's see what he's getting at. Here. We won't pay a penny more. It's a guarantee. Biden will not raise taxes on a single solitary American making less than $400,000 a year. That seems pretty definitive, right? <laughs> well, not so fast. You know, President Biden has pledged not to raise taxes on... Uh, households making less than $400,000, but... Man, that's a pretty crazy mistake for the Treasury Secretary to make. There is not one instance where Joe Biden or mistake for the... $400,000 not to raise tax... So fast. You know, President Biden has pledged not to raise taxes on uh, households making less than $400,000... Secretary to make... There is not one instance where Joe Biden or anyone in his campaign used the term households. 
Anybody making more than $400,000 will see a small to a significant tax increase. If you make less than $400,000, you won't see one single penny in additional federal tax. Oh, see? Biden isn't saying households or families. He's saying anybody and you. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. On the president's interview, uh, he said on taxes that anybody making more than 400000 will see a small to a significant tax increase. Uh, to clarify, did he mean individuals or households? Because it wasn't very clear. And Secretary Yellen, I think, has referred to households before. Families. You mother <laughs> You see how that escalated? It went from every single solitary American to families. <laughs> Okay. Are, are, is he insinuating that families that have a four hundred thousand dollars or more income bracket aren't? What's the complaint here? That is your classic Democrat bait and switch. Wait, what's the bait and switch? When we're talking about people, ma uh, families making over four hundred thousand dollars a year, this is a commitment that he talked about on the campaign trail. These. Pe okay, I mean, sure. Let's say they change their mind on the policy, right? And so, like, if there are two household members, like, one of them makes 200K, the other makes 205K, you know, that extra 5,000 is going to get taxed at the 2% higher rate. I I'm not understanding. Is this really that much of a problem? People are absolutely shameless. Now, wait, that makes them shameless? Is this guy, like, funded by someone? Okay, hang on a second. I, am I tripping here? Aren't like higher taxes, higher taxation for the wealthy polling? Aren't these like popular proposals? Majority voters want higher taxes on millionaires to fund more stimulus checks. So this is even more specific. Uh, direct payments or stimulus checks have been widely popular with American voters, which is true. The first round of checks was doled out last March. CARES Act, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Unsurprisingly, polling has uh, consistently shown that significant, uh, significant majorities of Americans like receiving money from the government. <laughs> yeah, true. A new survey by ALG Research shows similar findings while also revealing that a majority of Americans believe more stimulus checks should be funded through higher taxes on the wealthy. So that's even more specific. Let's keep going, though. Most Americans want the rich to pay higher taxes according to every poll everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We may live in polarized times, but there's one belief that Americans of all races, genders, and political persuasions can get behind. Tax the rich! Survey after recent survey confirms, quite simply, that most people think the richest Americans should pay more in taxes. The concept seems to have only gained more support since the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, which has disproportionately benefited the richest American taxpayers as well as some of the world's biggest corporations. And we are in an election year, of course, so arguments about the relative fairness of the tax system and whether the rich pay enough in taxes are bound to pop up and grow even more heated in the months ahead. According to a new Rudel's Ipsos poll, nearly two-thirds of respondents strongly agreed or somewhat agreed with the idea that the very rich should contribute an extra share of their total wealth each year to, pu to support public programs. That's the gist of what a wealth tax is, right? Uh, this is a similar question asked a slightly different way in a different poll, and the uh, the answer in this survey was a resounding yes. 76% of registered voters agree that the wealthy should pay more in taxes. So this is a popular proposal. So I'm not understanding what the deal is. I know what you might be thinking. Me and my spouse make less than $400,000 a year, so we won't be charged the, the top tax rate, right? Nope. Oh. Biden was... Is he saying that it's a slippery slope? Is that going to be the argument here? Lion, if your combined income is more than $400,000 under Biden, regardless of whether you file separately, your tax rate is going to shoot up to 39.6%. And that's a pretty significant penalty for being married and having a two income household. So my tax tip for today, you better cancel that spring wedding. What? So unfortunately, tax rates won't be falling anytime soon. Joe Biden, on the other hand... What? Wait, is this really? Is this really his criticism? Oh no, people making over 400k are going to have to pay 2% more in taxes over, for, over that 400k number. Is that really the criticism here? Who's his audience? How does this have such a positive ratio? Who's buying this shit? <laughs> All right, let's watch him fall. Damn. Damn. 
Damn. Biffing it, Biden. Just keep going, dude. Keep going. You're good. Don't worry, guys. It was the wind. And even though Biden fell three times in a row, the left has been oddly forgiving. Has he never fallen on stairs before? <laughs> Oh man, this is what the right has devolved into. Get ready, get ready for this for the next four years. By the way, like, if there's no major scandal that's coming out of the Biden White House in any in any like conceivable or like relevant way, um, then they're going to be focusing on dumb shit like this. You know, like, th does anyone remember the tan suit, right? With Obama, uh, I think Hannity was the one that uh, freaked out over Obama wearing a tan suit. Um, they just recently got mad at Kamala Harris for uh, not saluting. Uh, the service members as she was walking up uh, the plane uh, onto Air Force One or whatever fucking plane they use. And uh, they did the same thing against Obama when he saluted while holding a coffee. Uh, he was like holding a latte or something or a coffee cup and he saluted while holding it in his hand. And they fucking flipped out over that. They even flipped out about the fact that like someone was holding an umbrella for Obama while he was giving a speech. Uh, even though, like, every president has had that happen to them, of course. Like, it's easy to find photos of this shit. Um, yeah, it's it's honestly hilarious how trite uh, the criticisms of Democrats uh, become uh, whenever they're in power. Because, like, I mean, dude, like, whenever I'm having specific criticisms of the Democrats, they're, they're, like, pretty pointed. You know, like, hey, I don't like this policy proposal. Hey, I feel like the effect of this, you know, benefits the wealthy more than it benefits uh, the, the poor. Or... Hey, I feel like you're leaving a lot of like unspent like um, you know stimulus on the table. Or hey, you know like why are we trying to privatize this public institution? You know, I don't know. It, it's honestly very frustrating for me because you know this reminds me of right back during the Obama years. You know, I'd be criticizing Obama for um, you know the the kids in cages back then, right? Like. I was involved in uh, protests regarding it. I was uh, very vociferous against it at the time. I even made a YouTube video on a secondary YouTube channel that's still up um, regarding it uh, and getting frustrated at the fact that people were calling it like um, a migration crisis instead of a refugee crisis, you know? Um, and so I, I don't know, like I, I, I'm, I'm annoyed when that's like where I'm coming from, where I actually give a shit about the dignity of people. Um, we can have disagreements on, like, how to, like, raise that level of dignity, but, like, the facts are the facts, you know, and, and, and frankly, like, him falling up the stairs three times in a row, you know, him, uh, him, uh, raising the tax rate on families making 400 plus K per year by 2%. I'm sorry, these are not fucking concerns. This, this is, it's pedantic. I mean, my God. Which is weird considering that they went after Trump for things like slowly walking down a ramp. As an example, who's they? Here's one of the more... I mean, Trump was clowned for a bunch of shit because he's, like, laughably out of shape, you know. I'm not trying to be ableist or anything, but it's, you know, whenever you criticize Trump on that level, like, honestly, it feels like it sometimes. For things like slowly walking down a ramp. As an example, here's one of the more prolific creators on TikTok named Typical Democrat. Donald Trump is clearly unfit to serve as president. Recently, Trump spoke to- I love how the uh, likes and shares and comments are blocked, by the way. West Point graduates. But let's look at an alarming event that occurred. Trump is struggling to walk down the steps. Now, let's look at Joe Biden do the exact same thing. Why is this video about their physical shape? God damn. Walking up an incline and walking down an incline are not the exact same thing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Just, oh, come on. Come on, dude. Like, dude, dude, dude. Really? Is, is... <sighs> <sighs> this is the exact same thing. President Trump was walking slow, not because of any physical limitations, but because there wasn't a handrail and he didn't want to slip and fall. This is called being careful. 
unlike whatever this is. Anyway, the same TikToker claiming that walking slow means that you're unfit for office also thinks that falling three times in a row is just something the presidents do. So today, Joe Biden fell while he was walking up the Air Force One steps, and Republicans are going wild. They're saying he's not fit to serve because he fell. No, nobody is saying that, but we're sure making fun of it. They're saying that his fall is a sign of weakness. <laughs> Fact check true. But what they don't understand is that this is not unique for presidents. Presidents and vice presidents throughout history have fallen walking up the steps to their planes. For example, on June 23rd, 2020, Mike Pence fell while climbing the stairs to Air Force Two. And he got right back up. <laughs> not a big deal. President Ford also fell. Yeah, because of the rain. He had a legitimate excuse. And thanks to an excessive amount of negative media imagery, this fall basically defined his presidency. And I'm sure it had nothing to do with him being a Republican. You think that was what defined his presidency? And not the fact that he pardoned Nixon? Dude, am I thinking of the right president? President pardon Nixon. Yeah, it was Gerald Ford. Didn't this like, didn't this tank? Uh, told by his doctors they could either... Uh, Okay, so it says lingering public resentment. Let's check. Oh, is it a book? Oh, no, okay. Lingering. Okay. Jimmy Carter. Interesting. I don't want to read through this whole thing right now. I don't really give a shit about Gerald Ford. But no, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, it's pretty widely known, again, that it wasn't him falling that defined the his one-term presidency. It was the fact that he parted Nixon, who was wildly unpopular uh, as a result of the Watergate investigation. President Obama fell walking up Air Force One. No, he was walking down the stairs, and he didn't fall. He barely tripped. Give me a break. Hillary Clinton fell. Yeah, but Hillary Clinton was never a president or vice president, thankfully. So acting like falling, walking up the steps to Air Force One is an indicator of anything is really ridiculous. Uh-huh. Let's be real here. If Trump fell in the same exact way, Democrats like this genius would have been calling on Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. But in the initial video, even, he didn't even say that. He was honestly just, like, reaching for low-hanging fruit. God, this is so lame. Is this really what... Is this what Republicans are going to be like for four years? This is so fucking boring. Now, the real reason that people are making fun of Joe Biden isn't really because he fell. It's the irony. Look at how he steps and look how I step. <laughs> Watch how I run up ramps and he stumbles down ramps. Okay? Come on. And don't forget how this septuagenarian campaigned on how virile he is. Some people are always in a hurry. They run when they could walk. Race up steps when others take it slow. So the message to Americans? Vote for the candidate most likely to break his hip. Pro tip, Joe. Walk, don't run. Honestly, that was a pretty good closing right there because that's a, the name of the channel. Where would like the, the antithesis. That was clever. I'll give you that. That was good. Okay, cool. So that was uh, really stupid. Uh, I've got to say, you know, honestly... I'm not even really surprised, uh, and I kind of expect this to be the, the state of affairs moving forward, frankly. This is going to be a fun time. Um, I look forward to it being just a complete fucking clusterfuck of whining about things that don't matter. So, really looking forward to that. You know, like, even, uh, I, I'm sure, like, you know, if I, if I uh, go through a couple of these other videos as well... Um, We'll, we'll get we'll finally get to some policy prescriptions but like it seems like him and a lot of other republicans like even just people that i know in real life it's much more about nitpicking details that don't really change the overall picture of things you know like the fact that he literally defended 400k plus families um as some kind of like in like a weirdly populist way uh, at least that was the tone you know because he's just like taxes are bad you know they're coming for your money um it's just goofy to me so you know in all honesty um boring 
shallow, and expect more of this in the future. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to uh, hate yourself while watching this. Uh, just as I hate myself while watching this. If you have a problem with what I say, you know what? Fucking tell me. I'd love to talk about it. I love talking about things. And uh, be sure to subscribe and dislike. Fuck you.